Let me start this video by telling you what it's not going to be. This video is not to be used as an excuse for past, present, or future bad apologies, nor is this video trying to justify said bad apology. What this video is are my theories as to why people might be so terrible at apologizing and changing. This video has gone through many rewrites. At first, it was simply about how and why Kai was reacting so horribly throughout the copyright drama he created. Then after scripting, I realized the video would do fine without mentioning him. However, cutting him out made the tone of the video seem strangely somber for no reason at all, and now we're here. Obviously, this video is no longer about Kai, as he has proven himself, allegedly, to be far worse than any of us could have ever predicted and I will be linking videos around the situation in the description. However, I've also seen many situations in which a creator has messed up and would have been forgiven if they just apologized and made strides to change early on in the situation instead of digging a hole and dying on a hill. And of course, I'm hoping that this video is something my fellow creators can come back and listen to when they inevitably make a mistake. I'm not wishing for anyone to trip and fall on their face, but it's time to dispel the illusion that creators are perfect, no matter how much you may like them. I know upon hearing someone say that you're going to make a mistake will result in some negative knee-jerk emotions, but trust me when I say you'll feel better hearing it when the fuck-up lands on your doorstep. Before we get this gravy train started, I want to introduce everyone to the fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error refers to our tendency to explain the actions of others by attributing their actions to their personality characteristics while attributing our own behavior to external and situational factors, for example, finances, social pressure, trauma, etc. In other words, we tend to explain other people's actions as a reflection of their character, while explaining our own actions as a result of our environment. But only when the actions are negative, otherwise we attribute our positive actions to reflections of character. We are simultaneously judging others very harshly for their actions, while being aware that situational factors can lead us to behave in undesirable ways. I want to stress this because much of this video talks at length about how the environment can seriously influence someone's behavior, and this video operates under the pretense that the viewer can accept the fact that not every action taken by someone is indicative of that person's character. There are already multiple videos out there that can explain a situation based on the assumption that all actions taken by an individual are of their own accord. If that's what you're looking for, by all means, click off this video now. I'll see you in the next one. For those of you willing to stay, I hope you can incorporate the things said in this video into your view of the world the next time drama shows up. Apology videos have become synonymous with a bad video where the person tries to justify their mistakes and might say the word sorry once. This expectation is understandable when time and time again creators' apologies ring hollow. However, it should be noted that apology videos only get talked about when they're terrible because there's no reason to dissect a good apology. This begins to create a bias in the public eye that all apology videos are bad because the only ones we hear about are the bad ones. We hear a lot of how these apology videos are telling of a person and how it shows a pattern of behavior and yada yada yada. And I'm not trying to discredit people who are calling out others who are doing genuinely terrible things because, yeah, those sort of things happen much too often. People do genuinely terrible things because they're genuinely terrible people. But it's worth pointing out that because we hear bad person makes bad apology, the mind may inadvertently assign correlation between the two concepts, that an apology and a bad person go hand in hand, or worse, a causality, that an apology video is only made by bad people. It creates a stipulation in the community that a good creator should never have to release an apology video or else they might be a bad person. All this means there is already a community reaction before an apology video has even been made. And of course, this bias doesn't only affect the audience, but the creators as well reinforcing in their mind that people who've made mistakes have some inherent flaw that cannot be fixed, which means under no circumstances should the creator themselves need to apologize, or else it might mean the creator has some sort of inherent flaw. But <laughs> no. <laughs> it's quite rare that mistakes stem from something evil about a person, excluding both p-words and the z-word. Mistakes can come from a flaw in ego, in that someone might have trouble admitting when they're wrong. Mistakes can just as easily be made in the middle of an emotional moment, and because of the emotional outburst, sometimes be quite severe, but these things can be apologized for, and things people can learn from. None of this is to excuse any behavior, and if some people find what's done is unforgivable, go on, you don't have to forgive them. And this is kind of where the first problem starts. See, in real life, if you've decided not to forgive someone, you can actively choose to ignore and go out of your way to avoid them. Their life, as far as your brain is concerned, stopped the second you decide not to forgive them. The life they lead after the incident is something you can be completely blind to but not online. Because even if you are actively avoiding someone, you can easily check their social media to peer back into their life. 
and you get frustrated that they are moving along from the situation when your brain is dictating their life should have remained stagnant after the mistake was made. It's an understandable emotional response, but that's the end of it. When someone messes up, apologizes, and moves on from a situation, you're still valid to stay angry with them. But no one should be taking that anger as a legitimate reason to keep going after a creator. And that's part of the paranoia of being a creator. The idea that there will always be someone out there who's saying you shouldn't be allowed to move past your mistake and holding it over your head. Now, anyone who is a creator, listen up. You don't get to tell people how to feel after you've apologized. Just because you've said sorry doesn't mean everyone has to forgive you. I know it stings a lot when people say they don't accept the apology, but that's okay. You shouldn't apologize to be accepted back into the community. You apologize because you're letting people know you've realized the mistake and are now working to fix the mistake. All the energy that could potentially be directed at being upset people haven't forgiven you should be put into changing. Because at the end of the day, if you've changed, then there's no longer anything people can hold over your head no matter how hard they try. I hope what I've managed to convey in this section is the audience has a right to their emotions and that creators should not try and force them to drop those emotions. But at the same time, people who stay upset can't expect the people around them to feel the same way, assuming the creator is making serious efforts to change and grow. There's also the expectation that an apology will be speedy, with all the right words, and how the creator has taken accountability for the video. And to a degree, this is understandable. I do have to take a moment to stop and criticize the community for a second here. If the tone of the video is completely deft and clearly hollow, there is no problem with picking apart apologies. However, I believe in situations where even though an apology may not be worded perfectly, if there is genuine effort being made and is followed by actions to back up the apology, people really need to learn to let go of the little things. The audience never has to apologize in front of a crowd, because often in real life, you are being pulled aside to face one or two people who are involved in the situation to apologize. Can you imagine if while you're trying to apologize to those people, they suddenly start picking apart your wording demanding you say it the way they want to hear it? It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? And before people start making a fuss about my unlisted Rouge video because I harped on them in the comments for not apologizing right, why do you think I took the video down? I've realized I was swept up in the same thought process and I've taken action to correct it by unlisting the video. Do not take that as saying, I take back everything I said in that video, because no, what she did is undeniably gross. But if she's really moving on from her past actions, then let her be. I'd be a hypocrite if I said otherwise. I still believe it was worth bringing up what was wrong with her previous works up to the public, because it's still very easily accessible to children. Thankfully, there are still other videos out there talking about it, so even without my video, the message is being spread. Sorry for that little detour, I just had to say it before it started a shit show in the comments. Once you are in the public eye, what you do could easily affect someone else's life, and drastically at that. So correcting a mistake fast will lessen the negative consequences of said mistake. Pretty simple, right? Actually, no, because if it was that simple, this video wouldn't exist. Everything I just said was true, and I agree with that train of thought. But this is the real world, and the real world doesn't only operate on logic, it also hinges very much on emotions, and we need to start taking into account the emotions of not just the audience, but the creators as well. When faced with a severe enough mistake, it's not a long stretch to expect creators to apologize. But remember everything I just said about how the community sort of expects a bad apology before anything has even been said? Well, this in turn can cause creators to become quite anxious about making an apology video for all the wrong reasons. They tend to focus less on reflecting on their mistakes and more on what will happen if they can't convince people it was a mistake and that they can change for the better. In other words, they're more worried about how the community will take the apology rather than how they messed up and what they can do to avoid messing up in the future. And this is why the apologies so often ring hollow. People aren't listening and reflecting. They're mulling over how to make the apology sound as nice as possible so that the community won't unleash the full brunt of its anger over a bad apology. Either the severity of the mistake has to be lulled back dramatically so there's not much to apologize for in the first place, which by extension would mean there isn't much to be forgiven for, or they try to reason that there was no mistake to begin with, thus erasing the need to apologize. And as one can quite easily tell, both attempts at trying to apologize while not really apologizing will fail dramatically. The first one makes people angry because it seems the creator is trying to downplay their actions, which in turn means they're downplaying any potential suffering their actions may have led other people to endure. The second one is even more frustrating because it completely negates the unjust situations their mistakes may have spurred on as something completely right and deserved. So then, why do creators choose to act so irrationally when they're trying to apologize? For this section, I will be referring to Mayo Clinic's website as a source of information, which will be linked in the description. Commonly known as the fight or flight response, let's examine how anxiety affects the body. Once something has activated your stress response, adrenaline and cortisol, stress hormones, are released by the sympathetic nervous system in an attempt to help you fight off whatever is causing the stress. 
adrenaline will make you more alert and give you an energy boost, while cortisol, the main stress hormone, will curb functions unimportant to the fight or flight response. In addition to all of this, cortisol will communicate to the limbic system, the system responsible for controlling your mood, to feel fear and motivation. It should be a no-brainer that if your body is actively restricting your functions, including your thought processes that aren't integral to the fight or flight response, along with fear, will impair your ability to make judgments and decisions. Citing Stone Ridge as my next source for this section, I will make note that because this website talks about anxiety as a disorder specifically, some of the described effects may be scaled back in intensity, but it is also worth mentioning that a lot of creators do have anxiety as a mental disorder. Regardless, the first talking point will be how anxiety can make you hypersensitive to threats. The amygdala, which is part of the limbic system, is responsible for identifying threats. But when you are anxious, the amygdala becomes hypersensitive and will often falsely identify threats. This is why, during dramas, a creator may interpret a perfectly calm comment as being much more aggressive than it was originally written to be. Not helping is how the ability to reason is weakened. When the amygdala sends out its alarm signals to the brain, the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for helping you process information rationally and solve problems, is supposed to send its own signals so that we can act and think more rationally. But in an anxious brain, the signals the prefrontal cortex sends are much weaker, which means often the prefrontal cortex cannot be heard over the amygdala's false signals. The final nail in the coffin would be the hippocampus, which is responsible for storing memories. Anxiety will tell the hippocampus to store memories related to the source of anxiety like the falsely perceived threatening versions of comments. This can often cause someone to brush off or even forget the actual messages the comments were trying to send. However, thankfully, the parasympathetic system will automatically put a stop to all this once the perceived threat has passed. Uh oh, wait a minute. Let me read that again. <clears throat> the parasympathetic system will automatically put a stop to all of this once the perceived threat has passed. Well, that's not good because the threat will not pass until the apology video is out and the creator does not feel in danger of being cancelled anymore. But to not be cancelled requires the creator to make a good apology video that properly addresses all their mistakes and shows that they've reflected and are changing as a person. But they can't do that when their body is constantly in a stressed and volatile state because of all the stress hormones being released about a possible future cancellation. You see how the cycle kind of feeds into itself and leads to a problem that can't be resolved once it gets to the point of needing to make an apology video? The community wants an apology out and fast, while the creator is thinking of everything under the sun that'll lessen the severity of the mistake, and thus make it easier to accept the apology for said mistake, or alternatively, denying that there was a mistake in the first place, thus erasing the need to apologize, which just makes the community angrier and cancellation ensues. Now, again, I have to say, I don't find it unreasonable that the community would want creators to apologize as soon as humanly possible because they want to lessen the negative impact the mistake might be having. I also don't think there's anything wrong with posting about how you feel about a creator and their actions. Everything is public after all, so people have their right to critique and comment as they see fit. But frankly, I'm getting tired of seeing people act so shocked or disappointed that someone can't act properly when they biologically should not be able to function properly. And again, I feel the need to stress that this is not an excuse for bad apologies or any inappropriate actions taken by a creator. I need to point all this out so that creators will be more aware of what might be driving them to act so erratically and stop themselves before they do something stupid. And later in this video, I will be talking about how creators can change for the better even with all of this going on. There is one aspect in all of this I believe leads to a point of contention between creators and audiences. And that is how we interact with each other through our social media. Let's take a step back and discuss how this would all go down in real life. Say you messed up big time in front of the whole school or your workplace. Every time you come into school or to work, you can see how people look at you, and you hear vague whispers. You know that people are talking about you, even judging you, and you don't feel too good about it. We don't want people to view us negatively because that's what leads to being alienated from a community. All of this can horribly affect someone's mental health because of our innate need to feel like we belong and are accepted in society. It's why if people can't find places to accept them in real life, they jump into online communities to feel that sense of belonging. And once we feel like that sense of belonging is being compromised or in danger of being compromised, we start to stress. Now take that analogy back to the internet. The person who messed up is the creator, the coworkers or schoolmates are the audience, and the school of the workplace is the internet. But there's one very crucial detail that makes the impact infinitely worse. All of the whispering people are doing is put out for everyone to see. When I say we, I'm talking about the audience and creators alike. We treat our social media like our little circle of acquaintances or mutual friends who generally share our view of the world and agree with what we have to say. In fact, this is why a lot of people are so adamant about the don't like, don't interact rule. They're treating their social media the same as they would a casual friend circle. The audience will often post and create circles among themselves, 
saying what they would say in assumed friend circles, sometimes intending for the creator to see what they're saying, sometimes operating under the assumption the creator will never see what they're saying. While some may tag and try to provoke the creator into responding, others will simply be interacting with each other to share their thoughts. People are going to make inferences about the creator's character based on their actions, because that's just how things are. And while I'm not going to fault anyone for making those assumptions, it needs to be said that just because you've made those assumptions doesn't make them true. More often than not, mistakes are genuine and can be learned from, and are not indicative of some great hidden evil that resides in the creator as a person. And there's nothing wrong with the community's behavior. This is what happens all the time when someone makes a mistake. It's just that with the internet, we can now hear what people are whispering about, and we're not used to that. But as creators, we need to come to terms with the fact that sometimes we need to let people talk about us in ways we don't like to hear about. But just because I'm saying to let them talk, I'm not saying you have to listen. See, we're not exactly taught what to do when someone doesn't accept our apology. Think back to school. Anytime you apologize to a classmate, the teacher would then urge the classmate to accept the apology. It's often met with a curt, that's okay, even if they haven't really forgiven you. This simple action will effectively clear someone's subconscious and more easily allow them to move on from their mistakes. However, given the nature of a parasocial relationship, the audience often feels like they know the creator and should have a say in their actions, while the creator may as well be staring at a blank wall, feeling judged and shamed by strangers. Obviously, it should go without saying that the audience does not, in fact, know the creator. And if they do, it is the bare bones, because creators will only show on their platform what they feel comfortable showing. You can rarely get a clear read of someone's character without taking the time to get to know them. And you can't ever hope to know them without knowing their flaws. People will only feel comfortable showing their flaws to people who have gotten to know them. And that does not include the audience or any casual onlookers. Of course, it's not impossible to deduct someone's intentions in any situation given enough context and a careful reading, but it is near impossible to relate that information back to some fault of character accurately. So, not only is the audience acting more akin to a casual friend, chastising creators more harshly, honestly, and bluntly, this whelming gesture is more easily read as being aggressive, because to the creator, it's coming from a stranger. Obviously, if creators are being criticized, they should take note of what they're being criticized on. But after creators have taken note of that, leave. Turn off the internet. Delete the Cursed Bird app. Do anything except stalk the comments and post about people talking about you or the situation. Because I know you've done it. It's a natural reaction to want to know what people are saying about you, especially if it's bad. But doing so is only going to do a disservice for your mental health. Reading all those comments can cause a blow to the ego, which will unsurprisingly make creators more emotional, rash, and defensive. And that right there is why so many creators can never properly apologize. When I say turn off the internet, I'm referring to two stages, both of which I think should be executed for maximum benefit. The first stage will only last a few days. After the criticism has been jotted down, take some time to think about the criticism in an isolated space. This makes it easier to be honest with yourself, and it will be easier to admit a mistake when one feels there is no one to judge or ridicule them for said mistake. Then, come back onto the internet, delete or take down whatever the source of the mistake may be, and issue a public apology. The second stage may not be needed for people who can recover easily from coming under fire, but for those who can't, the second stage involves a very very long break from the internet. This doesn't mean creators have to stop posting or even making content, but it does mean staying away from interacting with the community and, of course, stopping yourself from stalking negative comments about you. This time away allows one to confront their mistakes and analyze why they made the mistake in the first place. It might come from a flaw that they have, which is why people are unable to reflect while they're still engaging with the community, because people would point and say that having the flaw in the first place is indicative of a failure of character. That would start the cycle of feeling attacked and becoming defensive, thus leaving the flaw unaddressed and free to wreak havoc in the future. It's important for those who are reflecting not to demonize themselves, because if you start to believe there's something inherently wrong, you won't bother to fix it. This time away should also offer some respite, time for them to heal any wounds they may have endured throughout the drama, so that they can function again at their maximum potential, and, you know, avoid making mistakes based on how they're feeling because they're emotionally and biologically unstable. It really is comical how the internet is so up in front about being less critical of oneself to better take care of their mental health, but are also so ready to jump on anyone who might be taking time away for that said reason, saying that the creator is just running from their mistakes, and if that they were really sorry, they'd sit there and read every single comment criticizing them and owning it. While I understand this mentality was born because so many creators really are running from their mistakes, I'm looking at you Shane Dawson, <laughs> I think it's time we confront the idea that sometimes people just need time away to think. So to summarize this video, 
Apology videos are bad, partly due to how critical the community can be, and because creators are more concerned with keeping up appearances than actually changing. Emotions play a key role in determining how people act and react, and while people can be criticized for their actions, people need to stop acting shocked when people who are feeling stressed aren't acting logically. The audience has every right to discuss and talk about creators however they want among themselves. However, they shouldn't be expecting the creator to be listening in to what they're saying, especially if it's damaging to the creator's emotional stability. Creators need to take a step back and just let people talk about whatever they want to say, and take time for themselves to confront their mistakes without worrying about looking like they're changing because that energy spent appearing like you've changed is energy better spent actually changing. This video was not made to make the community out to be some kind of bloodthirsty monster, and I hope it didn't come off that way. By making this video, I'm praying that more people are aware of how their actions may be affecting a situation, and that now creators may be more aware of the pitfalls that may come with their emotions, so that we can start to see more changes in each other. That about wraps up this video. Thank you all for watching, take care, and I will see you all in the next one whenever that may be. Bye!